Hello all, my name is Michelle McGill and today I will be talking to you about Mary Lyon who was a revolutionary female geneticist who made her mark in the science field during the latter half of the 1900s. Mary Lyon was born on May 15, 1925 in Norwich, England where she was the eldest of three children. Her mother was a school teacher and her father a civil servant. No one in her family preceded her in any sort of medical or scientific background. She was the first. Her early education began with her attending grammar school in Birmingham, where at this school she had a teacher who inspired her and influenced her to pursue science, as well as the prodding nature books she received from winning an essay competition. She first attended Girton College at the University of Cambridge in 1943 to study zoology. Unfortunately, she only received a titular degree, which is just a name with no actual substance behind the degree, since women were unable to receive real degrees during this time period, only men could. She later went on to Cambridge University for her PhD in 1946, where she studied under geneticist and mentor R.A. Fisher to work with mouse genetics. In 1948, she attended Edinburgh College to earn her doctorate and studied under embryologist Conrad Waddington. At Edinburgh, she also studied under Toby Carter, where she worked on mutagenesis in mice. She centered most of her research on mice with other geneticists known as the Conrad Group, and in 1955, they moved to the MRC unit in Harwell, which contained more room for mouse testing facilities. The Harwell Group contained mammalian geneticists, including Charles Ford, Bruce Cadenock, Rita Phillips, Joe Peters, Anthony Cyril, and more. Douglas Falconer, however, was who she initially completed research with when working with the MRC unit a unit devoted to radiobiology research. David Whittingham assisted her in setting up embryo freezing for mice at Harwell. She also worked on man-mouse homology mapping with John Edwards. Despite many positive relationships, Hans Grunberg publicly opposed her work on X inactivation, pictured here. Moving on to her important work and major contributions to the genetics field, she is most widely known for X inactivation associated with mouse genetics. She studied female mice that were heterozygous for a mutation in an X-linked gene connected to coat color. She created a hypothesis known as the Lyon Hypothesis, which states, The present communication suggests that the evidence of mouse genetics indicates, one, the heteroponotic X chromosome can either be paternal or maternal in origin, and two, that it is generally inactivated. She observed the phenotypes or visible characteristics of the mice in order to draw conclusions on X inactivation. She expected that all six linked color genes would show modeling in heterozygous females and that normal fertile females will not display modeling and demonstrate only one active X chromosome is necessary. The results pictured above suggest that something occurred early on in development to influence expression of normal or mutant genes. She concluded that heterozygous females for sex linked genes with non localized gene action will show incomplete penetrance and variable gene expression. In the picture you see above, an adult female mouse is displayed with the early embryos displayed to the right. The circles and rods represent the two X chromosomes, with the rod shape being an active X and the circle being an inactive X chromosome. In figure A, there is an equal probability of XCI occurring in normal female cells. In B, only one translocation product was inactivating, suggesting an X-linked region present for inactivation. And lastly, E displays a truncation where chromosome was shortened, but X inactivation center remained. In the picture above, the female mouse is variegation in her coat color as a result of the spreading X inactivation center on the chromosome to silence and coat color markers. Below is a nucleus of the female mouse with the inactive X chromosome highlighted in green and coated with the ZIST RNA. Her work eventually led to the discovery of the ZIST gene, which stands for X inactive specific transcript and acts as a major effector of X inactivation on the X chromosome in mammals. It also has a role in non-coding RNA molecules during regulation of gene expression. She also did work on the coloring of tortoiseshell cats. She found that female cats heterozygous for black and orange fur caused a patchwork of color where no one color was dominant over the other. The fur color gene is on the X chromosome and can only occur in female cats as it requires two X chromosomes. X inactivation helped explain genetic control mechanisms of the X chromosome to explain why female carriers of genetic disorders on the X chromosome can display mild symptoms. Relating to biological functions like the origin of tumors, germ cell development, and printing on mammals, and more. Much of her research provided an explanation for the basis of X-linked diseases like Duquesne muscular dystrophy, where a mutation on the X chromosome causes muscle degeneration and weaknesses as change occurs to the dystrophin protein. Mary Frances Lyon passed away at the age of 89 on December 25, 2014 in Oxfordshire, England. 
She was an intellectual, talented, and somewhat standoffish woman, deeply invested in her research in order to make pivotal changes in the genetics field, and was a strong role model for other women in science. As you can see above, here is my work cited. Thank you all again for coming to my presentation and allowing me to educate you on the great geneticist Mary Frances Lyon.